So the presentation, um, these can present, you know, in the ER, they can present in an outpatient clinic, guy has back pain forever, he comes in to get imaged at some outpatient center, or it can be a person that they know has cancer, but didn't know had metastatic disease. So they're, they're going to their oncologist, they've got new symptoms, they're getting checked up, and they find that they do have, uh, their disease has progressed and they have metastatic disease. So I think depending on where they are first seen, that will influence the initial workup. Treatment though, kind of that's where the, the end of the algorithm, those things will kind of converge and they will be treated. Um, there are a number of ways to treat them, but that's where all those people come together. But at the beginning, they can come from a variety of different sources. Now, like I said, um, the imaging approach is kind of, the, I think this is the way that you probably learned these as well, uh, Jonathan. The way you identify a tumor, first you wanna see in the spine, where is it? Is it in the osseous spine? Is it in the spinal cord? Is it in the, the dura, the meninges around the cord? Those things make a huge difference, can help tell you what it is. So you find out, so you, you localize it, where is it? What are your choices in that location? There are only a certain number of choices in any of those spots. And then based on other factors, you might be able to say exactly what it is, or at least narrow it down to one or two things. So, did I just go too far? This is a nice, ooh, that's bright. Um, this is the most common spine tumors right here, this nice picture that I found. So you can see you have osseous spine tumors on this side, primary bone tumors, extremely rare. Metastatic disease, 80 to 95%. So this is what everybody's gonna see. You can see my arrow, right? Yes, thank you, okay. The other half of the spine, spinal cord, uh, the nerves and the meninges. So you can have peripheral nerves, which uh, we aren't gonna talk about at all today, or you can have tumors within the canal, either um, intradural intramedullary, which are parenchymal cord tumors, or in the dura, so in the thecal sac, but not in the cord parenchyma itself, and that's these tumors right here. Now, I'm not going to show you all these, but maybe try to show you some principles in the most common uh, top ones there. So, actually, why don't I, do you want to talk about this anatomy picture, these different compartments? Sean, do you want to say anything about sure. this, I, this beautiful picture? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just generally speaking, when you are uh, discussing uh, metastatic tumors, or just basically tumors themselves to the spine, um, there are different compartments that you want to look at. So you, it can be either, so you look at it in relation to the bone, the dura, and the cord itself, okay? So something can be extra dural, um, which you can see there in the right portion of that image, extra dural tumors. You see it like it's right outside of the dura. It's either confined to the bone, um, outside of the canal, or the foramen, um, or just outside of the dura. Then you have tumors that are, intradural extramedullary, which means that they're inside the dura, but they're outside the spinal cord. Medullary is refers to the spinal cord. And then you have intramedullary tumors, which are um, growing inside the substance of the tumor itself. So when you're discussing these tumors, um, or we're discussing uh, spinal cord tumors, <coughs> or spinal tumors, not spinal cord tumors, spinal tumors with um, your resident or your attending, uh, you get a lot of brownie points if you mention this is a extradural tumor or intradural extramedullary or intramedullary tumor. You can just those those are the three broad categorizations of the different types of tumors um, that can exist, and each one of them has different um, uh, differential diagnoses and what they could potentially be. So it's um, it's good to kind of discuss that. Don't mind my kitten making noise in the background. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you for taking over while I was trying to take care of that. Yeah. So. Um, so on the imaging, and we're gonna use um, MRI as our imaging here, because sometimes CT, not x-rays. This, this graphic down here, I'm sure you knew this, but just in case, this is the spine right here. These are the vertebral bodies. So this is the thecal sac right here. The middle of the gray is the spinal cord. This green thing is the tumor. So it's cerebrospinal fluid around the cord, and the red is the dura. So as we are just saying, so, um, I don't, I, there's so many words here. I, I usually like to say parenchymal tumors, but yes, intradural, intramedullary. This will be in the cord and it's gonna expand the cord. This is, keep this in mind, because once you look at images, you'll understand what I'm saying. You'll, if you remember this, it'll help. So it expands the cord and it narrows the CSF spaces around it. If those two things are happening, it's probably intramedullary. Parenchymal cord tumor. 
if it's within the dura, but it's pushing the cord, so the cord is compressed, not expanded, that's going to be one of these two. So in this case, and I'll show you pictures where you can actually see this, you, you, it'll make more sense. Our, our dura is still here on the outside. The tumor is um, expanding this space, compressing the cord, versus this where the tumor is actually coming from the posterior elements here, like metastatic disease, epidural disease, pushing forward, compressing the cord, but you'll see this dural displacement as well. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.